Happy New Year. Well, hello, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're enjoying early 2024. I'm excited. I'm excited. I just preached on January the 11th. Just preached uh, the word of the Lord at Acts six at four, Acts six four conference, and the 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 day before I preach, my daughter Crystal Amanchuku preached the word of the Lord at the same conference, and what a joy uh, it has been to be on the same conference with one of the finest uh, young ladies that I know of. I admire her. I admire her ministry. I admire the anointing that's on her life, and the Lord has certainly anointed her to be a tremendous preacher. She just happens to be my daughter, and uh, what a joy. What a joy it is to serve uh, the Lord in such a manner. So I pray that everything is going well for you today. I'm excited about the things of God. And listen, I want to read a passage of scripture to you. And yes, I'm still, I'm, I'm on it. You know, someone told me one time it was an apt description. It said, when, when you latch on to th- something, you latch on like a pit bull, like a bulldog, and you won't let it go. And I can't until God tells me otherwise. Now the Bible says this, the Bible says this, I want to read something to you. Uh, Romans chapter number one and uh, verse number 32. It says, who knowing the judgment of God, they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. That is, not only are those people worthy of death who commit such things, but people who have pleasure, literally have pleasure, literally means here, who give applause. See that, Gary? Who give applause to them that do them. You better be careful who you give applause to. See, we've been giving applause to movies where the producer said this. It was important for us to make it abundantly clear to the audience that these two women had both a sexual relationship and a loving relationship and that Seely had one love in this entire story. He goes on to say, I wanted the love story to be prominent and didn't want to brush over that these two women are in love. And there are believers who have publicly given their applause to this. And this, uh, what he's talking about, is a lesbian relationship. A lesbian relationship that was so bad that uh, a rap artist, I I won't name him, I don't follow him, I've never heard his music. Uh, uh, Someone was telling me the the name of the brother and all that. But I, I appreciate that he took his daughter and walked out. And from what I'm told, uh, a few more couples walked out with them. I don't know if those couples were were people who go to church because uh, the church people seem to have been quite taken. Uh, So uh, look at this. Uh, So uh, you got to be careful who you give applause to. Now, I want to mention something to you. I want to mention something to you. Uh, uh, This is, this is, uh, nostalgia, Gary. This is nostalgia. This is going back to the way it used to be. And, and it'll and it help explain some things to you. And uh, so look at this. <clears throat> the, the headlines here. How the Catholic Church censored the golden age of Hollywood. This is from Vox. How the Catholic Church censored the golden age of Hollywood. The strict guidelines Hollywood needed to follow for decades. Uh, This is by Dean Preston. 
And um, uh, look at this. He says, when you think of the golden age of Hollywood, you probably think of some of the greatest American movies ever made. Citizen Kane, Gone with the Wind, Casablanca. Uh, but wh what you may not realize is that all these movies were censored by the Catholic Church. Not by today's Catholic Church. See, because Gary, I believe today's Catholic Church would, would see to it that the movies are just the way we're seeing them today. Since, since the Pope has already told the Catholics uh, that they can bless same-sex unions. And uh, all I'm saying is that's the first shot, that's the first sign of the Catholic Church caving to the LBGTQ community and they, they're giving in. But back in the day, in the golden age of Hollywood, let me finish reading this to you. From 1934 to 1954, every Hollywood movie needed to follow a strict set of moral guidelines that were aligned with Catholic theology. They included such things as, look at this, barring excessive drinking, on scene nudity, even sexual relationships between races. You didn't know that was part of Catholic doctrine, did you? And and uh, put sexual relationships between races in the same uh, category as on screen nudity and drinking. But the point is uh, that that was a, a standard in what they would and would not allow on. Um, on, on, on television and in the movies. You didn't know that Hollywood was submitting itself to the Catholic Church, did you? Enforcement was overseen by the Production Code Administration, which was led by devout Catholic Joseph Breenan, B-R-E-E-N. For decades, the Production Code Administration, the PCA, needed to approve every line of dialogue, every custom, and every poster for, a, for any movie that wanted their seal of approval. And as Professor Thomas uh, Daughtry told me, adherence to the production code was not optional. Without the Production Code Administration, the PCA's approval, your movie didn't get made. And, uh, and this was uh, from 1934 to 1954. So it kind of explains today why Hollywood is so raunchy, so filled with profanity, so messed up today. And uh, because it doesn't submit to any church's production code. Uh, if they did uh, uh, submit to the Catholic Church uh, production code today, I wonder if it would make any difference. I wonder with the way saints now, Brother Gary, they drool and how they, you know, you want to be on stage with the world. You want them all to like you. You want to sing with them. You, you, you are so enamored when they acknowledge you. Oh, we just, we just form and melt in, in the presence of uh, Hollywood types and worldly people. I believe today if we had a, a production code administration, the movies would be exactly as they are today because the saints, many, too many of us, because we want to be included with the world, we want the world to like us, we want the world, uh, we want the world's approval instead of being that shining light for Jesus Christ, We've changed our church services, our shout and our dance and our music, what, all that to be like the world. Probably the production code administration, if we had one today, that was worth its salt. Movies would be as filthy as they currently are. And that's part of the problem. You see, saints, we are called to be the light of the world. We're called to be the salt of the earth. And the only way the church can be the light of the world and the salt of the earth is for the church to serve the God of the Bible only. Serve 
the God of the Bible, serve the Lord only. That, that, that is a theme that God has given me for 2024. I almost said 2022, 2024. You know, our theme last year was strength, strength. Well, the Lord has strengthened us to serve him, to work for him, to make a difference and to push back against the wickedness of the culture. Now, some of you, you're pushing against the wrong people. You're pushing against me. You're pushing against other preachers who declare the truth. You're pushing against the Bible. Hey, you're on our team. <laughs> the Dolphins don't play against the Dolphins. The Cowboys, the Cowboys doesn't play against the Cowboys. You're not going to get uh, uh, San Francisco to play against San Francisco. That's, that's the kind of thing you do for practice when you're getting ready to play against your opponent. But in this day and time, the, the, the greatest critics that we have is not the world. It's church people, born again believers, coming to the rescue and speaking up for the wicked. I've never seen anything like it, my friends, before in all the days of my life. But Moses did say this. Moses said, who's on the Lord's side? And Moses said, let him that's on the Lord's side come here. Man, them, Gary, them Levites moved so fast because God was about to do something. And listen, I declare for 2024, the God of the Bible is going to show himself strong. Now, as I close this, you know what this stuff tells me. When you read the comments online and you see the positions that many believers have taken and the positions that they've taken against God, you know what it tells me? That we learn nothing from COVID. All these people that died, all these churches that closed, all this fear, all this, oh my, Lord, if you just let me live through it, Lord, if you just let me survive it, Lord, 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 if you would just, Lord, if you would just do this, that, and the other, God, I'll serve you for the rest of my days. We're behaving as though we learned nothing. Still pushing the same old junk still defending the same old ungodliness, still siding with the world, still doing the devil's bidding. We learn nothing. We learn nothing. And maybe we learn nothing because uh, we went home, closed our churches and, uh, and got online. Whatever. But, I'm telling you, I'm excited about what God is doing. And I want you to come tonight to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And the Lord is going to bless us real good. Uh, as you watch this, uh, I'm traveling. I'm working my way back to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And if it's the Lord's will, I'll get there in service. Unfortunately, I will not get to the service uh, in time to preach. But I have a ram in the bush who is going to give us the word of God with power and authority. Now, my friends, I love you. And uh, I pray that you would take this that we have given you today. And I want to say this. Be careful. Who and what you applaud. Hooray, hooray, hooray. More, more, more. Woo! Be careful who you applaud. God bless.